One of the things about human beings that's unique is that human females are picky maters. They're choosy. They're also sneaky because you can't tell when they're ovulating and with many other female animals you know. They have hidden ovulation and they're choosy and they tend to choose men who are more successful in the dominance heart. There's a shock. If you have a choice, why not? If you pick someone who's at the bottom of the competence hierarchy, well, that's probably not going to work out very well for you. And since women bear the burden of reproduction, it's perfectly reasonable for them to search out someone who's going to be helpful. So productive, fair, generous. And when you think of a dominance hierarchy, you might think, well, it's the powerful guy, the aggressive guy, say, that rises to the top of the dominance hierarchy. And that's not true. This choosy mating thing occurs with lots of species. There's this bird called the bower bird. You've got to look up bower birds, man. You just can't even believe they exist. And so the male bowerbird, he makes this really complicated nest that's close to the ground. He weaves it. It's really quite nice. You couldn't make one. And then he sweeps the yard in front of the nest. And then he runs around the forest, or flies, because he is a bird, finding pretty things. So maybe he'll find a nice collection of red leaves. And so then he'll take the red leaves one by one and fly back to his front yard and make a little square He's a bird, so it's not a great square, but he makes a little patch of red, and he takes a look at that, and then he goes off and finds something blue, and, and he decorates. He makes a little piece of abstract art in the front of his nest. And a lot of male bowerbirds do this all at the same time. And so then the females come along, they hop on something nearby, and they kind of look at it like this, checking it out. And if they're happy with it, well, then things proceed, but if they're not, they fly off to someone else's piece of abstract art. A male piece of art is rejected by like three females in a row, he gets irritated and brushes it all off with his wing, and then he makes another one. They obviously have a sense of very well developed sense of beauty. It's so cool. And I guess the idea is that, who knows what the hell the idea is. The female birds like artistic males, something like that. But if you're thinking about it biologically, maybe it's an indication of intelligence, right? It's a marker of intelligence. When it's certainly the case that Female humans prefer creative men. And no wonder, of course, we wouldn't be creative if that wasn't the case. So then imagine that there's two primary forces of evolutionary selection operating on us, and they're not really the natural world, which is what people always think, like the environment, the animals and the trees and nature. But it isn't nature that selected us. It's two other things, well, partly. It's two other things. So one is the dominance hierarchy, the male dominance hierarchy, is one of the primary mechanisms of selection. Women are faced with a hard choice, which guy to go after, right? That's a hard choice. They do the same thing that people do with the stock market. They outsource the cognitive problem, the computational problem, to the male dominance hierarchy. Then they just let the males sort themselves out, however they're going to, and then they peel from the top. And so what that means is the dominance, male dominance hierarchy itself is a selection mechanism. Because if you fail at it, then you don't leave any offspring. And so what that means, at least in part, is that we have adapted to be better and better at attaining status in dominance hierarchies over God only knows how long a period of time. And that doesn't mean just power. It might mean cognitive flexibility, because you could imagine dominance hierarchy A, dominance hierarchy B, dominance hierarchy C. If you're really successful, you climb up dominance hierarchy A. Right, but you'd B and C, no, if you happen to land in those, you'd just be a failure. Then you could say, the ideal human being is someone who can climb to the top of a dominance hierarchy, no matter what the dominance hierarchy is. Right, we've evolved such that success across the set of possible dominance hierarchies is the target. And I think that's why we have general intelligence. Because general intelligence is a general problem-solving mechanism. And it's a single factor even. Like there is, intelligence is a single factor. From the female perspective, females are the next gatekeeper. And that's why they're often mother nature. It took me a long time to figure this out. Why the hell is nature feminine in mythological representations? It's extraordinarily common, mother nature. You don't think of father nature, you think of mother nature. Nature brings forth new forms. So that's feminine. And nature selects. In 
fact, that's the definition of nature from a Darwinian perspective. Nature is that which selects, women select, their nature. And that's partly why far more men than you might think, like far more, are terrified of women. Because to be rejected as a romantic partner by a woman is to be classified as vaguely acceptable life form. No value in propagating it, though. Right, so it's a major, major rejection. And, you know, I've had dozens of clients and many, many people write to me whose primary problem is that they're so terrified of women they can't even approach them. You know, a chimp spends like 12 hours a day chewing and that's where they have a gut like this. It's like, you can't eat leaves, you know, have you tried? They have no nutrition, so if you're going to eat leaves, you have to eat a lot of them. And then it takes like three months to digest them. And so what we've done, and this is pretty cool because we're so smart, is that we've traded gut for brain. And that's why we're so svelte. And the way we manage that, it appears, is that we learned how to use fire to cook things. And that meant that we had high quality nutrition, much higher. It's easier to digest cooked things, especially meat. And so because we invented fire, we didn't have to have so much intestine and we could spend a little more time on the brain. So human beings really are fire users. We invented fire or discovered it or whatever, man mastered it at least a couple of million years ago. A long time. So that's all pretty cool as far as I'm concerned.